Hello viewers, how are you? Hope you are fine. Welcome back to my channel, Drawing Time with Story. If you are new in my channel, I will introduce myself and my channel with you. I am Suraya Parvin and in my channel, I normally select an object or a theme to draw and while drawing you will not get bored because I will narrate you a story or uh, some stories or deliver some pieces of information for you or we simply gossip with each other just related to the theme so as you saw my today's theme was the forest on a fire it's a very shocking it's a very sympathetic part of our life that when we see the forest on a fire but how to control it i will tell you a story uh, the story's name is the story of a forest fire and it was written by raymond s spears and we will uh, know how to control and how to use our patient bit to control the forest fires but luck doesn't um, help each time so to control um, forest fire forest fire is sometimes is a matter of luck too now it is the drawing time and the story time too so let's get started one night a careless man threw a burning match into a brush heap because there were and there were no rain so when morning came the west wind blowing up the valley was ash laden and warm with the fire that was coming eastward to the settlement in a line a mile wide soon after daybreak Lim Lawson made the fire on his way to Nobleboro and won the settlement of its danger. One man hastened to Nobleboro for the fire warden. Two went up the West Canada to the lumber camps. The rest of the male population, including boys, hastened down the main road to an old long trail. It was hoped that the fire might be stopped at the open the road afforded, but it didn't stop. With hoes and shovels, the men dug a trains through the loam to the sand, scattering the dirt over the leaves toward the fire. When the fire flames came along, they doubled, they redoubled their efforts amid the flying sparks and suffocating smoke, but without avail. The sparks and great places of flaming birch curl carried the flames over the road into the woods beyond the main, fairly surrounding them with fire. The men could only go before it, pausing now and then to throw dirt on a spark. Those who lived in the settlement glanced from side to side, wondering if the fire would across the brook, fire they now determined to make another and the last possible stand. The settlement was built along the brink of a steep side hill. The bed of the stream was only a few feet wide, cheaply sandbar and dry boulders at this time and beyond it toward the fire was a flat or bottom 60 rows wide averaging not two feet above the bed of the brook should the fire cross the brook it would climb the hill and burn the buildings then it would sweep across the narrow fields of grass or go round the ends of the settlement clearing into the big woods one of the firefighters were Wilburson, son of the man who had thrown the match, and as he fought with his hoe along the road he heard the man on each side of him cursing his father by name for his carelessness, and it happened sexually. More than once this man turned on Will and told him he ought to put that fire out since his father was blamed for it. Will did his best. Sparks burned holes in his shirt and flare of his sheet fire from a brush heap signed his eyelashes and the hair over his forehead. 
when old like Fraser cried out, it's no use here anymore, boys. Will was the last one who dug his head and ran for the road up the creek to the settlement. Half a dozen men were detailed to go to the houses and help the women carry the furniture and other household goods out in the fields to the watering trough. They raced Hessen to the brook and scattered along it and threw water on the brush at the ace, hoping the flames would be didn't when they came. Among them worked Wilburson. Thinking with all his might and looking up and down the creek as if the dry gray boulders with the scant thread of water oozing down among them would give him some inspiration. The width of the stream was only a few feet on an Everest and twenty feet at the widest pools over which the flame and sparks would quickly jump. The fire reached the flat at the foot of the reeds and came toward the brook in jumps. The men the men worked faster than ever with their ten quartered pails. The old like Fraser glanced up the stream and saw Will learn, leaning on his hoe handle doing nothing. Hi there, yelled the man, get to work. You tell the men some they want to looking for out will call the bag. Something will happen pretty quick. With that he dropped his hoe and went climbing up the side hill toward his home at the top. Mrs. Borson was just feeling the last of her bedding on the wagon when she when she saw Will coming toward her. He unhissed the horse from the wagon and had the harness scattered on the ground before his mother could control herself enough to cry. Those things will be burned here. What are you taking the horse for? For hot reason. Then she sank to the ground and cried while Will's younger brothers and sisters joined in. Will didn't stop to say anything but leaped to the back of the horse and away he went up the road. To the amazement of those who were taking their goods from the houses, but he was soon in the woods above the settlement and out of sight of everyone. He was headed for the dam. He was thought to open the little sluice at the bottom of it, which would add to the volume of the water in the stream, raise it a foot perhaps. He reached the dam and prying at the gate opened the way. A stream of water two feet square shot to the bottom of the dam and went sloshing down among the rocks. That water will help a lot, he thought. Then he heard the roar of the fire down the brook and saw a huge dull brick colored flash as a big hemlock went up in flame. The amount of water gushing from the gate of the dam seemed suddenly small and useless. It would not fill the brook red brook bed in a little shanty a hundred years away where the quarrying tools used in getting out of stone for the Guardian house. To this Will ran with all his speed with an old axe that was behind the shanty he broke down the door. Inside he picked up a full twelve pound box of dynamite and bored a hole the size of his finger into one side. Then with a fuse and a cap in one hand and the box under his arm, he hurried back to the dam. He climbed down the ladder to the bottom of the dam and fixing the fuse to the cap, ran it into the hole he had bored till it was well among the sawdust and sticks for dynamite. He cut the fuses to two minutes length and carried the box back among the beaky laws that held the dam. He was soon ready. He jammed the box under water among beans where it would stick. A match started the fuse going and then will climb the ladder and ran for safety. In a few moments the explosion came. Will heard the beams in the gorse tumbling as the dam gave away and the water behind was freed. 
away it went washing the and pounding water the narrow ravine toward the low bottom the firefighters heard the explosion and paused wondering to listen the next instant the roar of the water came to the air ears and the tremble caused by logs and boulders rolling with the flood was felt then every man understood what was done for they had been log drivers all their lives and knew the signs of a loose loose gate or of a broken jam so they climbed the steep bank toward the buildings to the ever of the flat line yelling warnings that were half cheers in a few moments the water was below the mouth of the gorge and then it rushed over the low west bank of the brook and spread out on the white flood where the fire was raging for a minute clouds of steam and loud hissing marked the progress of the wave and then the brush heaps from the east to east of the valley bottom were covered and the fire was drowned the fires left in the trees above the high water mark and the flames back on the ridges still thrust and flared but were unable to cross the wild wet flood belt the settlement and the big woods beyond were saved Saul Cardin reached the settlement on the following day and heard the story of the fire. In response to an offer from Will, he replied, "No, my boy, you need not pay for the dam by working or anything else. I am in debt to you for saving my timber above the settlement instead." Then he added in a quiet way characteristic of him, It seems a pity if wheat like yours doesn't get its full growth. So it was Will's peasant wheat how to control the fire of the forest, and he was able to control the fire. And his peasant wheat just saved many, many lives and the forest too. So how was the painting and the story today let me know in my comment section because I am always eagerly wait for your precious comments to read them to get inspiration and your comments really inspire me to do more things and to do my level best every time I read them And if you have any suggestions regarding me or my channel please feel free to write them in my comment section I will read them and I will try to answer them And if you forgot to subscribe my channel for listening to this story please don't forget to subscribe my channel and please press the bell icon to get notified when I release a brand new video for you Stay safe stay healthy